Hello and good morning, John. How are you doing today? Good. How about yourself? Absolutely fantastic. I had to do a workout in order to pick up this book, though. My God, you guys really put everything in there. Yeah, it is a chunk of granite, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you know what, though? What I felt inside my heart when it arrived and I dove into it, I'm going, wow, this book isn't just for my generation. This is a hand-me-down. And the way that you have crafted the storylines in here, it's every bit a hand-me-down. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I like the way that, that you go into telling the, the story and the history. You don't just have modern day pictures of the wild. I mean, I love the black and white shots. Where did everything come together for the idea of this particular book? Well, I've been poking about in wild places all of my life. And uh, I've been to many of the places in the book, as you can imagine. And uh, took a lot of trouble finding maps. Um, and where did the where did the ideas come from? Well, really, my own curiosity. <laughs> uh, I wanted to to know more about places. And s even if you go and visit a place several times, there's still unanswered questions. And some of these can be answered through photographs, you know, images that draw us in. But uh, maps also uh, serve to do it well. You know, for instance, in the Upper Missouri River Breaks National Monument. We have maps about cottonwood planting sites, or in the, the Boundary Waters Wilderness in Minnesota, we have uh, different types of wetland types that are throughout the wilderness, or just simple maps that show the extent of the the actual legislative wilderness area. You bring up maps. I'm so glad that you did because this modern day generation, well, let me just get onto Google Maps. They don't get the idea of that there used to be a time when we had to use a physical map in order to find our way <laughs> through any journey. Yeah, and I think that's one of the pleasures of wilderness travel is that um, maps are really still quite essential. I mean, you can use digital devices, but if your battery runs out or uh, if you lose a signal, uh, then a, a hard copy of a map is an invaluable tool. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at the White Mountains map, and I sit here and I can see the, the lay of the land. You know what the mountains are, and, and it just it inspires the, the inner child inside of me because this is the stuff that I studied while I was in high school and even before that because you had to learn where you were on that map and where was the survival going to play out. Yeah, and when you, there's, there's a physical quality to a map that sort of mimics the, the going out into the wilderness. When you unfold that map or unroll it onto a table and take a look at it, it's as if you're entering into the, the wild place itself. Uh, so there's a real art and craft to, to not only map reading, but root finding once you're within the wilderness. You know, you, you bring up something inside the book that I didn't know of. I grew up in Billings, Montana, where we had the sandstone cliffs. They called them the rims. Lewis and Clark called them the palisades of the Yellowstone. And then I just learned here that on Lake Superior, they, too, have the sandstone cliffs. Yeah, um, well, that's another, you know, fascinating part of, in researching this book was, you know, learning about the geology of many of these places. Wow, and, and I, I talk about Lewis and Clark, and what do I have right here? Lewis and Clark, the expedition. Now, have you ever traveled up to Pompey's Pillar, uh, where, where it was the only area where they physically marked into the, into the rock that they, they existed on this path, outside of their personal journals? I, I have not been to Pompey's Pillar, but uh, I did uh, paddle much of the, the headwaters of the Missouri River because oh, I was so God. enchanted by their journey. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that whole entire area up there is just wide open. And I mean, but I mean, look what it's doing to me as an adult here. As I turn from page to page, it's turning me into that explorer, that that person that wants to find out more about his country and, and not just its people. I mean, there, there's so much out there for us to learn still, even today. Yeah, and wilderness really is a part of the American democracy. You know, the, the, the Wilderness Act was created in 1964. And the rest of the world really followed our lead when it came to wilderness and creating uh, wild places and parks and uh, places where we could escape to nature and, uh, that are untrammeled by man.
as the legislation reads. I was blessed with the opportunity to talk with uh, Joe Nesbo. He's one of the, the greatest authors of our time right now. And and the thing is, he was he was talking to me from Greece, and he was out rock climbing. That's where we did the conversation. And I asked him about, what is it are you feeling from those rocks? And in and, 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 and holding this book here, I, I totally understand it now. He said, when you're next to a rock, time stands still. L- look at what you've put in this book. Time is standing still because you're studying the lay of those rocks. Yeah, yeah, and that's just only one of the the many diverse facets of the wilderness experience. You can go from geology to, you know, study of wildlife biology to the spirituality of wilderness. I'll tell you, the, uh, in, in looking at this, it reminds me of the Uori Forest, which is here in North Carolina. And, and so it's just I just love the way that you're telling the story of all of these areas that most of us will never get to. But yet we can feel what your adventure was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, um, in, in some instances, I tell it through uh, journal entries. But for the most part, I, I uh, as you've noticed, uh, it's uh, journalistic writing about earth sciences and and other people's adventures. So how long did it take you to do a book like this? Because, I mean, this is something that deserves to be in every school across this nation because it gives you the opportunity to do some good book reporting. Well, its predecessor is probably in many schools across the nation. Um, The first book that I did that came out three years ago is a bestseller called The Atlas of the National Parks. And this book follows in its wake. It took me two years to write it, to answer your question, but it really has taken me all my life to research it. I've been doing these wilderness journeys since I was 12 years old, and I'm 67 now. <laughs> you know what you know, scares me right now, though, John, is the fact that this book right here has documented so much wilderness of America as we are heading into this gigantic moment of climate change, and I can't help but wonder what will life be like 10, 30 years from now, and will this book be used as a tool saying, this is the way it once was? Yeah, and on that note, we need these wild places because they are an antidote to us in times of climate change. Not only because, for instance, they have we have trees in these wilderness areas that act as sinks for carbon dioxide, um, but um, we need wild places um, to hold back uh, industry and and to restore the world as it once was. So. Maybe it's because I am from the Pacific Northwest, but I've always thought that they have the most gorgeous beaches uh, in the United States. I mean, I, yeah, I get the ones that are here in the South, and we get to run out there and play like like beach bums like we are. But, boy, out there in the Pacific Northwest, did you feel the energy from those gigantic rocks out there in the ocean? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Particularly as you go further north, there's, there's a combination of that kind of cliff structure uh, along with these, you know, beaches, uh, beaches that stretch for, for uh, you know, nearly 100 miles oh, yeah. uh, uh, along the Pacific coast. And, and so that's the idea behind this book is to show the diversity of, of wild places from not only the, you know, the deep forests of, say, the Boundary Waters canoe area, but the, the uh, beaches of Lake Superior and the beaches of the Pacific Northwest. In a really creative way, do you see yourself as one of the great explorers of this modern time, like that of Lewis and Clark and other travelers? I see myself as falling in their wake, like uh, many of my, I hope my readers will do. Yeah. You know, uh, I take inspiration from others. And um, the world it has largely been explored, but that doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of places where we can go and uh, feel like we're Lewis and Clark. You know, you're so right about that because I took up RVing in 2010. My life changed because I really felt like I finally discovered America. And it wasn't from the front seat of my car. It was by getting into nature. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't. it can be as simple as a walk in a in a quiet city park to, you know, a visit to the uh, remote Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, wilderness is different for, for all of us, but we need these, these wild places. To, we need the sanctity of nature uh, for our own 
souls, really. Yeah, and and and, I, and one of the things that we haven't talked about are those elusive animals, well, the, the things that we don't see because our mind is locked in on something else, like the beauty of a tree or or some rocks and the way that they're they're stacked up. But what about those animals that you saw? Yeah, you know, one of the most thrilling things is to in Alaska in particular. It's a place you can still go to see. Uh, uninterrupted uh, wildlife from um, tens of thousands of caribou migrating from yeah. the North Slope back to the, the lichens of the South or grizzly bears or wolves. Uh, but we have those things in the lower 48 as well. And thanks to this wilderness legislation of 1964, you know, again, America has created a, a, a magnificent system of wild refuges yeah john you got to come back to this show anytime in the future 10 minutes with you is not enough dude well i'm happy to come back just tell me when absolutely will you be brilliant today okay all right have a great day